Hey guys, I'm back with another art journal tutorial video for you today. And I'm going to start this page out the way I start all of my pages. Um, you can see I've put some tape down the spine for some support. And I'm going to be going in with some Tim Holtz tissue paper um, to give myself some background. And I'm going to be sticking this down with some matte medium. And I just wanted to let you guys know at the end of the video today, I have got some information for my Twitter in case you'd be interested in following me on there. Um, I am going to be posting when I've got some new videos coming out. I may also be doing some live streaming in the near future. So I'm going to be posting um, whenever I go to do a live stream or something like that. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Stay tuned at the end of the video to get that information. Um, so I'm just um, using my bone folder here to uh, just smooth out any creases or any air bubbles that get underneath the tissue paper. And you can see I've had some trouble getting my tissue paper to stick, so I'm going back in with some matte medium. I've never had this issue before. I use matte medium to stick down a lot of my um, pieces on my art journal pages, but lately I'm having a lot of issues getting them to stick. So I don't know if I just need to get some new matte medium or what's going on, but, um, but yeah, you'll see me kind of struggling with it throughout the video. I'm going in with some gesso now and I'm just going to cover the tissue paper with the gesso to push those images and texts farther into the background. And I'm using just a thin layer of gesso because I do want it to be seen. Um, I just want it to be a little less noticeable. And also it makes the surface non-porous which makes the um, distress paint uh, move around the page a ton easier. Um, makes it blend a lot easier. And I'm going to be using the color Spun Sugar. I'm using Pickled Raspberry and Seedless Preserves um, is the purple color and that's going to be used for the border of the page. So basically I'm starting this out like I do most pages. Um, any of the pages that I do the Distress Ink, I try to use multiple colors just to give it some dimension. And then I'm going to go in with my baby wipe and just blend this out all over the page. I'm always disappointed in the spun sugar color and it always seems like, I don't know, it's never quite as pink as what I want it to be. So it kind of always, <laughs> the pickled um, raspberry kind of takes over the page a little bit. But I mean it does create a few little light areas I guess. And I'm going in um, and creating this border and then you'll see I'm going to add some more of the other colors to kind of soften up the border a little bit because it was kind of harsh against the background colors. I really love this technique of using tissue paper and gesso and distress paints. I was actually looking into getting some different acrylic paints um, but I don't know like I tried out a couple different brands and there are some nice brands out there, but um, the colors just aren't as vibrant, I don't feel like, so I'm still on the lookout. And then I'm going to be choosing some paper to use uh, for some hearts because Valentine's Day is coming up, so this is sort of a Valentine's themed layout, which you'll be able to tell here soon. So I'm using, um, I'm actually not going to cover the paper with um, gesso so I'm just going to be putting some paint right onto the paper so I'm using papers that I like the background and I want them to show through and then I'm going back in with my um, pickled raspberry and I'm just going to completely cover this page before I cut out my shapes and you can tell like the um, Distress paint doesn't move around quite as easily when there's not gesso on the page and that's because it is more porous so it's kind of sucking into the paper a little bit more than if I had put gesso on top of it. But I think that that looks really cool with the background coming through the page. I, I like the way this looks. I was really happy with how this turned out. For this one, I'm actually going to split it between two different colors. 
Um, I am going to do half the page in the pickled raspberry and then to be honest I don't know what the yellow color is that I used I can't remember which one it was I have a couple different shades of yellow uh, it is another distress paint by Tim Holtz and it's one of the yellow shades and I was just doing this to save paper um, because I didn't need a whole nother sheet of either of these colors so if you have two different papers that you're wanting to use for your hearts or if you have um, multiple pages you certainly don't have to split it up this way I was just saving paper I've been asked a few times about um, why I don't use a craft mat underneath uh, my book and my page and you can see like I get paint all over the table the thing is that the table is actually the table that I sit at is actually plastic and it's actually really perfect because things don't really stick to it 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 does have sort of a porous texture and I would think that things would stick to it worse paints and inks but they really don't it's a lot easier for me to just wipe the table right off I mean this is a table that I use only for crafting so that's why I'm not too worried about it it wipes right off I mean you can see that in the background like there's some little smudges here and there but if I take um, a wipe to it it really just comes right off I used a Harlequin stencil earlier as you saw and I laid down another layer of um, background and I just used that pickled raspberry color again and now I've created uh, some stencils of my own and I'm just tracing them on the back of this paper and there's just a couple heart shapes I drew these out beforehand because I'm really bad at drawing heart shapes so I wanted to make sure I got the exact shape that I was looking for so I went ahead and created a stencil and you can tell I actually had to do it like the old school way by folding it in half and creating my hearts and it took a couple tries because I'm really picky about how my shapes look and especially heart shapes so I knew I couldn't get it just by freehanding it and I'm actually saving these stencils because I'm sure they're gonna come in handy again at some point so I'm just tracing it on the back and just cutting out the heart shapes um, I originally thought I'd use like pink and blue but the yellow color really dried a really pretty color on the cardstock that I used so I was really excited with how it looks on the page I'm folding my heart in half to make it a little bit easier to stick on the page because it's going to be going right in the middle. I'm using my bone folder to create a really strong crease there. And you can kind of see on my book, um, my spine is splitting, especially um, on this set of pages. So I have been reinforcing them all and I do have some techniques to go in and fix the binding issue a little bit, which I probably will do if I ever become brave enough to try it. Uh, because it does require that you cut the spine of the book and then basically rebind it and I'm not quite sure I'm brave enough to try it yet because I have some really some of my favorite pages in this book so eventually one day I think I'm going to be forced to if I want to continue making pages in this book and I really want to fill it up but you can see the clip that I've got at the top right hand corner I'm holding the pages down and that's just because um, the spine has become kind of warped in it and it's not um, it's not wanting to stay put while I work on the page now I'm going in with some matte gel and I'm just going to completely cover the hearts and the important thing here that I'm also going to do is I'm actually putting some around the edges of the hearts and that's so that I can go in with my Faber-Castell big brush markers and I can do some shading around the hearts um, because I want them to be able to smear and if I don't have matte gel down it really doesn't want to smear very easily so you'll see I'm really going outside the lines around the hearts and that's intentional the important thing is to make sure that your matte gel completely dries 
before you um, go in with your big brush markers. So here is, um, I'm using just a brown color and I'm just gonna trace around and then I'm gonna smudge the line. And I can do that, I have a few minutes or a few seconds to smudge the line because um, I have that matte gel down. And you can see this really helps to set the heart off of the page and make it pop. Um, I'm using that same pickled raspberry color, but when I put down this outline, it really makes it stand off the page. Gives it sort of a vintage look, and I really like that. I use this technique on, I would say like 90% of my pages. Anytime I put down or glue down a shape or a stamp onto my page, I like to do some shading around it. I just think it makes it look a lot better. Now I'm going in with some Delusions ink, and this is in the color Cherry Pie. And it is in a spray bottle, but I'm not going to be spraying it. I'm actually going to be using it for splatters. So you can see I just unscrew the spray nozzle, and I just splatter it by tapping it all around the page. And I got pretty heavy with the splatters, but that's okay. I really liked the way it turned out. This is a stamp set that I actually got, I think it was at Target, and it's just a like $3 super cheap stamp set. Um, the only bad thing about this stamp set is that because they're wooden, it's hard to see where you're stamping the letters, so sometimes it's easy to get them too far apart or too close together, but I'm just using it for one word, so I thought it was really fun. I'm using... Um, a multi-liner pen and I'm just creating uh, messy scribbles around the outside of the word. And then I'm going in with a Tim Holtz um, sticker set. It's just a sticker set of words and phrases and I'm just sticking that down to create the full um, phrase. And the phrase is love with all your heart. The stickers only had the word hearts, so in plural. So I just cut the S off to make the right um, word. And then I'm just going in again um, with my pen and creating some messy scribbles. And then I'm just going to be gluing this down with some uh, matte medium. And then I'm going to go over the top of this with some matte gel like I did with the hearts because I'm going to be adding some shading to make these pop as well and to kind of tie them into the page a little bit better. You can see I'm going all around the outside. And this matte gel does make that Dilutions ink bleed really bad, but it's pretty easy to go in with a baby wipe and clean it up. You just want to make sure that when you dip your brush back into the matte gel that you don't transfer some of the ink into the matte gel and then um, turn it pink. So just be careful if you mix the two. And then I'm going in with a Jelly Roll pen in white, and I'm just going to add some um, white details to the hearts, some highlights. I had so much fun with this layout. I think this is one of my most favorite layouts that I've done so far in this art journal. It really turned out a lot better than I thought um, at first. This is a cheap stencil, actually, that I think I just got at Walmart, and um, I was looking for something with hearts, and surprisingly, I didn't really have that many hearts. So um, this was something that I had, so I'm just going in with some modeling paste, and I'm um, going to put down some little hearts. But you can see I, I've taped off all the other hearts in the stencil. The stencil itself isn't that great, to be honest. It um, The hearts are really close together, but it worked for what I needed. 
I had a lot of fun with this layout and I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, stay tuned because there is some information um, where you, how you can follow me on Twitter to get updates. I am trying to do two videos a week now and I'm pretty excited. I have some new stuff coming to the channel, possibly some live streams, so you'll want to um, stay up to date on that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos on the way. Bye guys.